Ores. Hi. We have got our work cut out with these. We've been given a 1983 Suzuki Katana 750 to recommission on the proviso that we get it back on the road. So what would you like to see with the Katana then? I'd like to see it back on the road. Would you? All right, guys and girls. Who am I kidding? All right, guys. No girls watch this. So we're gonna, because the sump plug has been out for so long and it's been sat in such a dusty, damp environment, uh, we did stick the camera in, but you can't really see much with the camera. So we're just gonna whip the sump off. just dried out pools of emulsified oil. Trouble is, we've gone and done what I didn't want to do specifically. So we've broken the sump gasket. So we're gonna have to buy another one of them to put it back together so we can start it up. And it's one of the reasons why I didn't want to check inside, but it's a little bit silly not to check inside. Cause that looks like it's never seen any oil. So leave a comment on that. What do you think of that? That looks brand new. Maybe that was changed. Let's have a filter off. That's loose. Yeah, definitely loose. Mm. Super clean. There's a little bit of rust on the gearbox. I need to order up a new gasket. I don't know if you can see that and if that's coming out on camera. But it's like a crusty sticky goo that's where the oil's been sat for a long long time and it's basically evaporated into a, a grease because it's just been sat for so long you see the, the scale marks on it bizarre now let's swish this thing around and work on the top end i'm just gonna go around with the uh, allen key first and make sure all these We'll see it properly. And I know you Norman 69s will be saying, don't hit your toes with your hammer. I don't care. I've had a lot of Suzuki's in past, and I happen to know that the bolts are notoriously like cheese. Just look how clean that is. Absolutely pristine in there. That does not look like an engine that's done 42,000 miles. Well, it does. It's just a, a very, very well serviced one. A little bit of crap here that I've just uh, let in. We'll clean that up. There's no, no play in the chain. Now, you guys said you wanted to see this. So here's the proof of me getting this bolt out all on my little old. Just see how deep we need to go. Popping it into this hole. Just clean the drill bit up. Drop it in. So that is the length of the, the bolt. How far are we in? Still a fair way to go yet. Well, that seems like it's gone all the way through. I don't have my smallest easy out. Should be just about small enough. Oh, that does not feel good. You see, there's no torque on that. It should just roll out. It might be oxidized on the edges. And when steel meets aluminium, you get horrible corrosion. Right, 
right guys, so it's been a few weeks. Uh, we've been off to Scotland and come back and we've had post. We've got some oil. These are a great idea. The only thing is it leaves you with a bit of a dilemma where you put the waste oil when you drop it out. But I love this idea. Roll them up, throw them away. We've got a filter, we've got a gasket. Every time I've walked past this, I've been spraying ET85 in it and I've warmed it up a couple of times. You might be able to see where I've melted the, uh, the electrical tape there. Like I say, the only reason I've put the electrical tape on that is so that you don't get this covered in metal filings because it's magnetic and it's a real pain in the ass to get off. I have made a bit of a mistake when I put it on, which I've just noticed. I've put the rock cover on upside down. So we'll sort that out. That's one thing I've got to sort out. So the gasket's for the sump. So we've got to replace the sump. And I went to my local place, Sid Smith's, and he had in stock a new sump plug. Nice magnetic one. And a crush washer. So we've got our work cut out. We need to get this bolt out, which I did promise everybody. You all said, oh, we want to see this. We want to see you get it out. So you can see me fail to get that out. Reason why this is difficult to get out is because it's a, I believe, a stainless steel bolt but a Suzuki stainless steel bolt, which is made of cheese. And the casing is a, a aluminium. Or if you're from America, aluminium. Mim, mim, mim. So it's really easy to mark the aluminium, but I don't want to damage that surface because there's only one. You can't, you can't replace it. I'll crack on and I'm gonna try and get that out. What's happened, I think, in there um, is we've got oxidization, which is holding the stainless against the aluminium. And what happens is because of the corrosion inside it, it kind of welds it to it and I've been warming it up. So hopefully, we should just be able to give that a bit of a tap and it will set off rolling. Now, I don't want to use the Easy Out because the Easy Out's so small, they're so easy to break these. Whereas they are useful if you've got any kind of torque on the bolt, it's just not, it's not worth it. You can feel it bending and it will snap and then you're in a whole heap of trouble. We're going to try a few things first. We're going to give it a little bit of a tap with the centre punch and see if it'll go around. If we can set it off going, then the easy out will pull that straight out. Okay, let's give it a little bit of a tap from underneath. Yeah, that's what I didn't want to happen. I did pretty well on this bolt. Got right down the centre of it. So, but I've left not a lot of meat on the bolt which is not a good thing. So I could do with a really sharp chisel, but I don't have one at the moment. Let's get a little notch in that. Yeah, that's, uh, that's screwing me a little bit, so. If you can see that the top coil of the threads come off so i've got nothing else to really grab there's nothing proud anymore so i didn't get directly down the center of it i did a pretty good job i would try the easy out again not a lot of pressure because i just have given it a bit of a a bit of a scotch yeah no that's gonna that's gonna break i don't want to be too fierce on it so first i'm going to use a heat gun so i've got a little piece of scrap a bit of aluminum in them and i'm going to hold that against the side there so I don't interfere with any of the uh, electrics I don't want to damage those right put the finger yeah that's fine enough so we've got a bit of heat into it what that does a bit of thermal expansion the aluminium will expand at a different rate to the steel and the joint in between them both you get a little bit of movement and dislodge a bit of that corrosion that still feels, yeah, that still feels a bit too. Next option could be I run another drill down it and possibly you can just peel the threads out but if you're really close down the center. So let's give that a try. I do have some reverse action drills. But as you can see, I don't have any reverse action drills. Ah, I found a reverse action drill. All right, so hopefully now that will grab and wind it out and get it out without damaging the threads. And that's the trick here. So let's keep it as straight as I can. A bit of pressure on it. 
and that was the hope, that was the plan, to get it to hammer a little bit like that, but hopefully that would have come out, but it didn't. Oh, we may have got something there. Let me get right inside, you can see. I've not, I've not nicked the thread, but I might have opened the bolt up enough now where I can collapse the bolt in. Uh, and that will take any torque off of it, any resistance in the threads. So if I just hit down from this point here, just hit down from there, hopefully, it'll collapse there and I can just wind it out in one piece. We'll try it from the bottom first because we've got more meat on the bone. Uh, oh, that's what I want to happen, but all the way down. It's quite important to be a bit patient with this. And I'm not the most patient of people. Oh, if I can get a nice sharp tool in there now, I should be able to collapse the bolt possibly. Ah, there you go. You can see it now. Can you see what's happened? I can't really see it too well on camera, but the top part of the bolt has collapsed. Now that's a good thing. If I can push that far enough over now, I'll be able to grab it with the forceps and unwind it. Ah, the top's broke off, I think. I've done absolutely everything I can now. I might have to ruin my screwdriver here, but needs must. It's only a Halfords one. Well, that's the last piece of bolt. Brilliant. Zap myself in eye with lamp, and now I can't see. I check with the screwdriver, and it's the right depth. So, only thing left to do is run a tap down it. M5. <clears throat> We'll not get the threads cleaned out all the way down to the bottom just because there's a taper on the end of the, th on the, end of the tap. But we should get it cleaned out enough to get a bolt in it. Now nah, I'm really happy with that. That's it, that's got to the end. Just give it a little wasp round. Just run it through a few times and then should be able to get a 5mm bolt in there. Oh, crap on there. Oh, I'll put it back over here and then it'll, it'll focus, but that's cleaned out the threads. So I wanted to get right down and clean in the bottom of the threads. So I'm taking a bolt, just a little a little trick, got a couple of slots with a junior hack. So then run along the side of your thumb. Just one side. Just rest your thumb there. Now what that does, if we can focus on that on its own, you've got a couple of little slots in the end, and when you screw that in, that'll scoop up all the little nasties. Oh, you can feel that doing its job. Went all the way to the end. All right, that's that's thread bound now. See the muck inside there. Just give it a little blast out with some compressed air. Look at that. Rub with some coarse Scotch Bright. That's it. Pretty nice clean bolt holes. have got our work cut out with these. They are jammed up. Absolutely solid. So yeah, this is going to be fun. I think it's fair to say that this katana is a real dog. So how far we go with the project, how far we go with the restoration is all down to you guys. Now all I need from you is a like. Just go down, hit like right now. After that, if you'd like to, 
we'd love a comment from you. And if you could subscribe to the channel, that would really help us out. If you do none of those things, this project stops when I've got it started. And if you want to support the channel directly, please buy us a coffee using the link in the description box. It's time to give myself a hernia. I'm going to stand down here and I'm going to sit the engine off. Just for the time being. So seeing them on my own, I'm going to get the guitar on the bench, I'm going to pull the wheels out of it, pull the front forks out of it so the belly of the frame sat on the actual bench and then I'm going to position the engine myself. Let's just make do. So before we throw the engine in, let's get a few ancillary parts off of it that we don't want to be damaged. What's the betting that these plastic covers aren't cheap? <laughs> and I'll bet those bolts do not come out. So I have to drop the forks out through the clamps, and I bet these covers aren't cheap either. I need to get one clip on off, and you can see by the sweat on me, it's hard work getting these out. I'm just going to have to warm it up and break some more. Well that was on there. Now that took some serious getting off. No matter how much GT85 I sprayed in there, it was not penetrating. Here's where the back goes. This is not awkward at all. I push the engine in, the frame goes that way. I'm sure there's someone now who's done a million of these engines who is screaming, what are you doing? Ah, we've got a bracket there. That's really limiting the room that we've got. So I wonder if it may be a better idea to do it from the other side. Right, well, let's do it from the other side then. This is not heavy at all! Yeah. Yeah. Let's just get one bolt in, secure it. The secret is at this stage is not to tighten anything up. I can hear my dad. Don't tighten anything up until you've got everything in place. Here's before, and here's the after. <laughs>